Um, JK flip-flops and T flip-flops um, used to be used in the past a little bit more. Um, these days, T flip-flops that we've learned are the ones that are mostly used in design just because they're very simple. Uh, but nevertheless, you may have to work with JK flip-flops and T flip-flops. You might need to analyze circuits contain them and you need to know uh, their operation. Now, I don't want to talk too much about the implementation of how, how we actually uh, build these things, so sort of similar to what we developed in um, week five. Um, I do want to get you familiar with their characteristics, um, introduce what they do, um, and then how to design circuits using them and how to analyze circuits that do have them inside. Um, okay. We start with the JK flip-flop, and they're not as straightforward as the D flips, unfortunately. JK flip-flop is a positive edge triggered uh, flip-flop, so you will get take new values on rising edges of the clock as well, and they will depend on their inputs J and K. Now, um, J and K flip um, inputs work very closely to what S and R used to work in our latches and flip-flops using um, set and reset signals. The best way to remember um, this table here is to remember that the J corresponds to um, the set signal, the K corresponds to the reset, reset signal, with the main difference that when we have this 1-1 one, one condition, which used to be undefined state, instead of um, going to an undefined state, it will toggle or invert the current um, state of the flip-flop. So if you want to see the parallel between JK and SR, you can think about the fact that when we had SR00, we said retain the current value inside the flip-flop. When we had 01, it's sort of in a reset state. You will push um, the output Q to zero. The set state, the one zero, will push, will force the output to one. And now what used to be undefined in the JK flip-flop will just say invert whatever you have inside there. And this is what we call a characteristic table of the flip-flop. It tells you what's the behavior of the flip-flop, what will be um, stored inside the flip-flop according um, to the current state and the inputs to the flip-flop. Now, from uh, the char characteristic table, we can um, derive the characteristic equation. Something that will say the next state of Q, or a large Q, is some function of the inputs J and K, and the current state small q. So to do this, we'll use um, Economap. Now this table here is a truth table, but it's an abbreviated version of a truth table. Instead of adding the third input, which is the current state, I used it um, as in the column of the output. I could have just as well have a truth table with eight different rows, and then say, for each one of those four combinations, have for each one of them another combination when the current state is zero and when the current combination is one. And this is why essentially I will have eight squares in the corner map. Let's see how we read this thing into the corner map. Well, we have the J and K at the top, we'll, which will be the current um, inputs to the uh, flip-flop. We have the current state on the side and we'll say well, if we have inputs 0, 0, it means retain the current input, or the same as here. So if, sorry, retain the current state. So if the current state was a 0, it will stay a 0. If it was a 1, it will stay a 1. If we have um, jk equals to 0, 1, or put it in the reset state, regardless of what my current state is, the next state will be a reset state or a zero um, in both cases, when the current state is zero and when the um, current state is one. If I go to um, JK being one zero, then it's a set state. It will put my 
flip-flop in a one condition regardless of what the current state was. If I'm, if I'm getting 1-1, one, one, it means invert the current state. So if the current state is 0, I will get a 1. If it was a 1, I will get a 0 at the output. Now this, I can optimize it by grouping these groups together and come up with the equation for the next state is either j and not small q this is a j, eh? not a j bar j not small q or not k and small q why do I write q zero? habit and this is the characteristic equation of this flip-flop compare it with the characteristic equation that we had for the d flip-flop when we just had the next state equal to whatever the input was that was fairly simple now not so simple anymore we have to consider the inputs as well as the current state to determine what's going to happen um, or what's going to be the next state from this flip-flop now this is actually a very important equation to remember uh, because from here you can derive pretty much everything um, I think it's fairly easy to remember especially once you start working with JK flip flops because, because you use this equation all the time if something happened and you forgot the equation you can always derive it back from the table just like I've done now usually you won't have to do that now there's another table that we can um, come up with and this is when we actually um, designing a machine using JK flip-flops in when designing um, machines I will have things that will say I'm in some current state small q now I want to end up in this current state uh, in, in, the, in this next state large q what values do I need to put into my j and k in order to get um, the desired value it's not so obvious from the previous um, um, from this table or from this equation now in order to um, come up with the values I can pretty much set the values needed into my characteristic equation and I can say that for example let's take the first line here the situation my flip-flop is currently in state 0 I want to make the flip-flop stay in state 0 so that's the first line there what should be the inputs to my j and k so I want to stay in state 0 I will have some j ended with not of the current state the current state is also 0 so ended with 1 or not k ended with the current state so current state is 0 so 0 obviously this will just become 0 equals j for the obvious reasons or j equals 0 as for the k it doesn't matter what k was because that 0 will 0 it out anyway so it could be either 1 or 0 or 1 and therefore it don't care similar logic I can apply if I was in state 0 I want to end up in 1 I will end up with j equals 1 same you know you set the same values there end up with j equals 1 and again my k doesn't matter because it will get zeroed out what about if I was if I started in um, state 1 and I wanted to go either to 0 or 1 let's consider the case where we're in state 1 we want to go to 0 so we want to go to 0 the 1 here, the not 1 will 0 out the j so um, no need to write that or not k 
ended with the one, which is just not k. So if not k equals zero, obviously k equals one. What about the j? Well, the j was zeroed out because of that, um, because of the not q here, so zero ended with something, and therefore I don't care. And obviously the same logic, if I want to end up in state one, after I was in state one, then I get not k equals one, therefore k equals zero, j, I don't care. So again, what is this table used for? When you uh, want to design a machine, then you know, you know, you end up with a table that tells you this is the current states, these are the next states that I want to go to, or, you know, current state, this is what I desire, therefore, these are the values that I have to set my JK inputs to the flip flop. And we will do an example in a second. Before I do the example, I want to introduce the other type of flip flop uh, for today, and that's a T flip flop. T flip flop have one, output, uh, one input to it, input T. T stands for toggle. And what it will do is that if T is zero, it will leave the current state as it is. If T equals one, it will toggle um, or invert the current state um, that is stored in the flip-flop. So it's a fairly simple truth table. On zero, leave it as it is. On one, invert it. So that's the characteristic um, table of the T flip-flop. If you're slightly observant, you can see the relation between T and JK flip-flop in such that a T flip-flop is really a JK flip-flop with both its J and K tied together to form the input T. Because we said with JK, if both of them are zero, we will retain um, the current value. If both of them are one, we will toggle the current value. So this gives you a nice, easy relationship between the T flip-flop and the JK flip-flop. Now, on the same, um, the same way that we went before, I can um, come up with the characteristic equation for this flip-flop just by analyzing uh, the table. It's going to be a smaller economet because there's now only um, one input and one current state. Yeah, question? You don't. That's why, um, but that's true for any flip-flop. I mean, you don't know what state you're starting with. And this is why, in reality, most flip-flops have a reset, set, preset, or clear um, signals to them that you do want to put your machine into some known state at the beginning. Um, OK, so in order to come up with the equation, we look at if t is 0, then uh, we'll just keep, uh, I need my blue color. We'll keep the current state. If it's zero, it will stay zero. If it's one, it'll stay one. If my t is one, means toggle the current state, then a zero will become a one, a one will become a zero. And there's not really much grouping you can do here. You can really just circle these as they are, which will give us the equation t not q or not t q, which is an XOR gate, yep. Which sort of makes sense because we said an XOR gate, one of the things that it does, that it's useful for, is if you XOR something with a zero, you stay with the same thing. If you um, XOR something with a one, you invert your variable, which is essentially what we are doing here. So this is the characteristic equation for the T flip-flop. Again, on the same idea that if I had, um, if I wanted to design something using T flip-flops, I know what state I'm in, I know what state I want to go to, um, what's the relationship between them. Well, you don't really um, need to go through the equation for this case here. It's actually pretty obvious. If you want to stay in the same value, 
leave t at 0. If you want to invert the value, put t at 1, because this is what t flip-flop does. So if I wanted to go from 0 to 0, meaning leave the same value, t will be 0. Same thing if I wanted to go from 1 to 1, or stay from 1 to 1, t will be 0 as well. The other two cases, if I want to invert it, therefore t will be 1 and 1. All right, so these are the two new types of flip-flop, j, k, and t. I gave you some definition, I'll show you some table and some equations. Let's do something with them. So, I want to run this, um, you know, sort of a, a little bit of a tutorial format, so I will go through this problem and uh, try to solve it. I do have um, some state table, so this may have came from some problem that someone gave you and they said come up with a state diagram, therefore convert it to a state table, assign binary coding to it, and this is how we ended up here. So we sort of already know how to come up with state tables for a given problem. Now instead of telling us now implement this using D flip flops, I'll tell you implement this using both JK and then do the same exercise to implement using T flip flops. And how do we go about doing this? Well, all right, so we know what the current states are, and I will start with the JK um, flip flop implementation. I know what my current states are. I know where I want to go on either x equals 0, x equals 1. I only have JK flip flops at my disposal. They have those funny J and K inputs instead of the good old D input. I need to figure out what to put into them. And this is when that um, table that I showed you, this one here, this is an arrow. Um, comes in very handy. I can look at where I am, where I want to end up, and this is uh, what we derived before. Now a few words about notation, and you really have to pay attention about what's, um, what's, what matches what and what's going on with what, because this tend to be a little bit confusing sometimes. Once you get the idea, easy is. So first of all, this is just the same um, state table from here. I haven't touched it, same thing, but I added a few more columns uh, or expanded this um, table here now. Now when I just look at what I sort of know, just a reminder, it tells me that if I'm in state 0, 0, it means that I have two flip-flops, both of them equal 0 right now, and I want to go to the two flip-flops, either both of them being 0, or that one of them will stay zero, the other one will go to one. So I have sort of two separate um, flip-flops here. One of them, in this case, will stay zero. The other one, we need to change the out, the, the, well, the current state for it. And this is why we now have to have a um, few different columns. Each one of those columns will represent the inputs, both the J and the K, and this is the notation that I've used, um, to the input. So each one of these will have two bits to them. One will correspond to the J, one will correspond to the K. This and this, uh, these pairs will correspond to the inputs to my um, Q1 flip-flop, and these two will correspond to the inputs to the Q0 flip-flop. Now it's, I think it's pretty apparent once you sort of look at it, um, but once I start writing things, it will get a little bit confusing. Stop and think about what matches what, and hopefully this will resolve the confusion. And this is when it gets a little bit tedious. Um, feel free to tune out if you want, but um, again, don't sigh. Okay. Thanks. So I'll start with analyzing the first line. If I'm in state 0, 0, and I want to stay in state 0, 0 for x equals um, 0, so this case here, I want to have my um, q1 going from 0 to 0 and my q0 going from 0 to 0. In both cases, 
I will need the inputs 0x. So 0x here and 0x here for both the flip-flops. If the input was 1, I want my q1 to stay at 0, which is what we had here, which is 0x. But I want my q0 to go from 0 to 1. 0 to 1, and this would be 1x at the input to this flip-flop. Now, uh, just don't forget, this column here and this column here correspond to the same inputs to the same flip-flop. And similarly, this one and this one. I just separated the two cases when I have x equals 0 and x equals 1. Looking um, at the next line here, so I either go from 0 to 0, which is 0x, or from 1 to 0. 1 to 0 is x1. Or I go from 0 to 1. 0 to 1 is 1x. Or I go from 1 to 1, which is x0. Don't shush a choking person. <laughs> That's just rude. <laughs> All right. If, <laughs> if you go from 1 to 1, it's x0, and then 0 to 0 is 0x. Zero 1 to 1, x0. Zero. 0 to 1, 1x. One By the way, if I make any mistakes, you know the routine, just yell out. From 1 to 0, x1. From 1 to 0, x1. From 1 to 0, x1. From 1 to 1, next zero. And this is now the important bit of um, the circuit. One of the nice things that you notice straight away is that there are a whole lot of don't cares in this table here. In fact, every input to every flip-flop has at least one don't care. It turns out, and you'll see this in a second, that when you're designing with JK flip-flops, you, you really make good use of those don't cares to a point where the combination of logic that feeds into JK flip-flop is usually much, much simpler than any D or T uh, flip-flops. This is one advantage of actually still using JK flip-flops because it does make the um, circuit around it much simpler than using D. D is simpler for us to use, but you know, it's not that complicated. Now, how do we actually work with this? Now that I've developed what needs to be the inputs uh, to my JK, I can say, well, I no longer, for the development of the circuit, I no longer need this part, and I only really need to know what my current state is and what the inputs are to the JK flip-flop. And what I want to do is now develop the combinational circuit that will feed into um, those JK flip-flops. Remember, I have two JK flip-flops because I have um, four states. Each one of those flip-flops will have two inputs, J and K. Therefore, the four counter maps, J1, K1, J0, and K0. Now, each one of those um, corner maps will be a function, well, of the current state and of the input x because we do have the distinguish, uh, distinction between what happens when x equals 0 and when x equals 1. We'll start with um, reading the J1 map slowly and then we'll um, pace it up. So for J1, I'm looking at this column here this here, and I'm using this column here. Both of them correspond to the J1 flip-flop. And the order will be um, the current state of 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. So I will read it as 0, 0, don't care, don't care. So 0, 0, don't care, don't care. For the case where x equals 1, I'm reading this one here, it's 0, 1, and then don't care, don't care.
And I will um, fill up the other ones before I actually find the equations. So for K1, looking at this one, it's don't care, don't care, 1, 0. And here is don't care, 0, 1. Uh, don't care, don't care. The one is the one one combination. <laughs> All right. Then for the J zero, looking at this one and this one, so I have zero, don't care, don't care, zero. Here I have one, don't care, don't care, one. And then to finish it off, I have don't care one, one, don't care, don't care zero, zero, don't care. And then I can utilize those don't cares to come up with um, largest group possible. This one unfortunately can only be fairly small group, but with the others, this is a group of four. This one will happily be a group of four. This one will be a group of four. That will give me the equation. J1 is um, x q0, this one. K1 is just q0. J0 is just x and k0 is just not x. If you look at the complexity of these equations, huh? you realize we hardly have any gates. We have one OR gate here between two signals that are already available to us. These two don't actually need any gates. These are just wires connecting from one of the fifth of back to the K. This is just connecting the input to the J. This will need one inverter to take our input and invert it. But overall, it's a fairly simple circuit. And this is it. We said that one end gate, the one inverter, and then everything else um, J0, for example, just connected to the X. Um, K1 is just connected um, to the output of this fifth up here. And the circuit is fairly simple. Um, questions about this so far? So this is how we go about if we had to design a JK-based um, circuit. That is, if you had a state diagram or a state table, and you had to come up with a circuit using JK flip-flops. Now, forget everything that we've done in the past 10 minutes, and imagine you don't know what the circuit is, and someone told you, here's a circuit, what does it do? Come up with the state table or the state diagram for this circuit. Now if it was um, D flip flop based circuit, then that would have been easy because we know the next states are just a, um, a function of the input and we've got, we can um, come up with the input equations. We said no sign. I'm just doing it for spite. Um, but the things are not as easy or not straightforward in JK-based um, circuit. They're not hard, but a bit, you need a little bit more work. Now to actually analyze a circuit like this, well, you start off with, if I just gave you the circuit, you start off with finding the equations. And when I told you, you know, forget everything you just saw. That was um, a very pretentious statement because how can you forget we've just done it? Um, so then you actually come up with the um, equations again. These are just easy to come up uh, from the circuit. But then what do we 
well, what do we do with them? How do we end up with something with a table that tells us current state is this, these are the next states? Because the next states are not a direct, they're not directly um, related to these. We have to go through some intermediate um, step. And because I didn't prepare a proper slide for it, this will be all handwritten. So the current state for, and this will be for Q0, sorry. The current Q1 and Q0. Now, I want to end up with something that will say, what's the next state for x equals 0 and what's the next state for x equals 1? But to do that, I need to figure out what will be my values for j and k depending on the current input and the current state. So we'll come up with the uh, flip-flop inputs. And again, I have Uh, four inputs in the whole circuit. But I do want to distinguish the case again when x equals 0 and when x equals 1. So I will have So I have to go through this intermediate step here to figure out what the inputs of the flip-flops once I know the inputs of the flip-flops, it's actually very easy to figure out what will be the next state. So this will then be next state column where this will be um, Q1, Q0 for x equals 0 and Q1, Q0 when x equals 1. Now these can be filled directly from the equation up there. The equation for J1 depends on Q0 and X. Therefore, all the places where X is 0, bless you, J1 will be 0 as well. All the places um, that X equals 1, then J1 will just follow Q0. So here, Q0 is 0, 1, 0, 1. It's this column here. And again, by looking at those patterns, you can fill up this table very, very quickly. K1 just follows Q0. So Q0 is, Q0 is this one, 0, 1, 0, 1. And for this as well, there's no dependency on an input for K1. J0 just follows X with no dependency on the current state. So J0 is X, well here X is 0 for all those cases. Here X is 1. And K0 is just not X, so the opposite of J0. So the situation that we have now is that we have the current state, we know the inputs um, to the flip-flops, and we can come up and derive what will be stored in the flip-flops um, once uh, uh, we get a clock rise, um, or a rising edge of the clock. Now the best way to um, work with these kind of things is to go back and remember the JKs are very similar to SR uh, flip-flops in a sense that when we see a zero, zero, we will retain the current value. Zero, one will put us in a reset state. Uh, one, zero will put us in a set state. And one, one will toggle um, our current state. So looking at Q1, so the next state for Q1, Q1 will be influenced by this column and this column. So for Q1, x equals zero. If we have zero, zero, we're retaining the original Q1, which is this one. For 0, 1, we're resetting it to 0, regardless of what we had before. 0, 0, we're retaining what we had. 0, 1, we're resetting it again, regardless of what we had. If 
for, and I'm still doing Q1 for um, x equals 1 now. So 0, 0, retain what you had. We had a 0. 1, 1, toggle what you had. I had a 0, therefore I will have a 1 at the output. 0, 0, retain that particular 1. And 1, 1, toggle um, what you had now. We had end up with a 0. Okay. Um, doing Q0, by the way, any mistakes? Did anyone spot? No? Doing Q0, similar thing. I will look at this column here and this column here. Luckily, all these columns for Q0 here just tell me put everything in reset state. So all those Q0s will go to their reset state. All these four tell me put Q0 in a set state. <coughs> and essentially what we ended up with is a table. If you now ignore the intermediate um, step that tells us this is the current values for this circuit um, this is, these are the current states, these will be the next states or essentially the state transition table for this particular, um, for the particular circuit. Now just to relate it back to what we've done with the D flip-flops, essentially we did go through this intermediate step with the D flip-flop, but with the D flip-flop we just said, well, large Q is just equals to the D input. So we didn't actually bother um, duplicating the intermediate step again to the next step, um, but it was sort of implied there. Here we have to go through it, and this is um, the state table. Now because you have the notes printed in front of you, can you actually verify that this table here is in fact, you remember this circuit came from the table that we had at the beginning? Do they actually match? I really, really hope so. Well, no one yells out, so it should match. When I was um, doing this exercise, because obviously I practice those things at home for, for leisure, um, when I was doing this exercise, and then I looked at two things, they did not match. And I'm like, ah, uh, right. And then I had a little panic attack that all the lecture slides deriving this circuit were wrong. And this may have been five minutes before the lecture. <laughs> so I may have panicked a little bit. But then I realized I actually had a mistake somewhere. So, no. so that was fixed. Not so fun is the fact that in your tutorial solutions for next week, I did do a little mistake there, which pretty much made me cross out about two pages of work afterwards. Um, hilarious part is for two years, people never noticed that mistake in there. It was like two years after I first released th those solutions that someone came up to me and said, hey, shouldn't that be a one? <laughs> Not my favorite student at the moment. No, but they will, they will be fixed now. All right. Um, any questions about, so we, we've done two things now with the JKs, right? We started with the state table. We designed a JK base um, circuit using uh, one method. Then it happened to have been the same circuit, but I could have thrown at you a different circuit and said, all right, analyze this, come up with the state table. And we ended up with the state table. This state table um, can then become a state diagram if needed, um, and we can actually figure out what it does. I mean, essentially, when we analyze circuits, 
re really reverse engineering stuff, right? Because those circuits being engineered, and besides, reverse engineering sounds cool. So when they ask you, what do you do at uni? I reverse engineer <laughs> with this. OK. Um, just to um, quickly finish it off, because the, I think the idea um, is fairly familiar. It's just a little bit of a different um, method to get there using um, the T flip flop. It is, if you remember, the original question was, here's a state table. Um, implement the circuit both using both JK and T flip flops. Um, I won't make you go the two ways. Um, we'll just try to implement the circuit. Now, uh, the same idea that we have what the current states are, we know where, to want, where we want to go to, and we, we can use the excitation table to figure out what the T values need to be. Having said that, you don't really need an excitation table for a T flip-flop. All you need to think about is, my current state is this. Is the, current, is the next state the same or inverted? Because it can either be one of two things. If it's the same, my T should be 0. If it's inverted, my T should be 1. And don't even bother looking at this table. This table is there. It will be true if you do want to use it. Uh, but then working with T flip flop and the fact that there's only really one input kind of makes things a bit quicker. On the downside, our circuit will be a little bit more complex because we don't have the luxury of don't cares anymore. So, um, and this will be a fairly quick one. Zero to zero, I'm staying at the same one. It'll be zero, zero to zero, not flipping anything. One to one, <coughs> I'm staying in the same one, therefore T is zero. 1 to 0, I'm inverting, t equals 1. Clear? Cool. 0 to 0, I'm staying. 1 to 0, inverting. 0 to 0, staying. 1 to 0, inverting. Then, when the case when x is 1, 0 to 0, staying. 0 to 1, inverting. 1 to 1, staying. 1 to 0, inverting. 0 to 1, inverting, 1 to 1, staying, 0 to 1, inverting, 1 to 1, staying. How quick can you produce this in an exam situation? That was about 20 seconds. So th this, if this is the question, then you have about 29 minutes and 40 seconds left to do the other questions, the hard ones. This is not an exam question, by the way. I'm not hinting anything out. It really isn't. No reverse psychology here. All right. Um, so now, again, just to remind you what we are actually doing, start up with the state machine. We figure out the inputs to the flip-flops. Now we need to come up with the combinational circuit that will take the current state, sorry, the current state the current um, input, and we'll, do, um, and we'll come up with these inputs to the flip-flop that will eventually make our state machine go into the right state that we want it to. Kahnemetz. Reading the Kahnemetz for T1 when x is 0. I'm reading 0, 0, 0, 1. When x is 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. For t, 0, I'm getting 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. How quick was this? Another 10 seconds? Because, come on, exam question won't be just that, right? It'll be that and that. So we still have 29 minutes and 20 seconds. Still plenty of time to do the hard questions. Uh, what do we have here? We have this group, Q0x or Q0, Q1, 
one, T zero, which is just the same. Oh, hold on. Yeah. As Q zero X or with X. So we have the two um, T input equations coming up with the circuit that does this. Now the the thing is, if you remember, this circuit here implements using T flip flops the same machine that I implemented before using JK flip flops. With the JK flip flops, the JK flip flops only had two gates or one and a half because the inverter is really sort of half a gate. Here we actually have quite a complex combination circuit or more complex than what we had with the JK. Now, I haven't actually tried implementing the state machine using D flip flops. Um, for the fun of it, you're free to try it out and then see if you're actually getting uh, worse or better, better than what you get here, and compare it with the JK as well. Now, as I said at the beginning of the lecture, this will be it for the week seven material. Um, on Friday, we will start the very log, which is the week eight material. Uh, notes will be available tomorrow on Moodle. Um, and send me any comments if you have bugs with the videos in the quiz.